Okay, guys, here we go. We're in the next video. Uh, now we're going to show a few more tips and tricks, what you can do and test when it comes to UI testing. Here is more examples. Uh, I wanted to show you the one thing that I showed you in the last one, uh, what you can do with this inspect. So right click and inspect. I want to show you where you can find uh, the properties of this input field. So you can hear it, you can see it here under the styles and you can see that the width is 165 pixels and for example if I try to change this you will see how does the width change, you see? Like you can put 170, it's bigger now. We're gonna put it back to where it was, okay. Um, what else? We can see the height. We can change that. So I just I'm just changing this because I want you to see where you can find these properties and to make you sure that that those are really uh, for that. Okay. What else we can see? So we can see the dimensions, height, and the height and the weight, uh, width, and we can see the font size. For example, if I put it here like. Uh, 20 pixels and you see it's 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 much bigger now uh, you can see the borders you can see the background color and all that CSS stuff okay uh, let's now proceed I'm just gonna refresh this page uh, to bring it back the way it was Next thing, what we can see, what we have, it's some kind of a reset button. So what would we expect here? If I select some dates, and uh, I don't know, put this leave status like cancel and employee, I don't know, this one, I don't have to pick each of the criteria. And then I set and I click on reset. What would I expect? I would expect that all of these things that I just selected to be reset as it was when I first landed on this page. And let's see what's going to happen. Well, this is one of the things that is by default on this page. So this stayed. Uh, of course, it can be unchecked, but the dates haven't changed. This can be either a bug uh, in some cases, I would expect that when I do the reset, I would expect this to happen. To see this when the, the thing that I saw when I first time got in this page. But maybe that is by requirements. If it's stated by requirements that everything goes back to where it was when you first landed on the page, then this would be a bug that the dates stay the same after I click the reset button. So you're trying the functionality, seeing what's going on in the UI, are the, the, is the data the correct one. On this page, uh, I would like to show you uh, one more thing, and that is collapsible panels. When somebody says, what is a collapsible panels, where you have this arrow here, and you can expand and collapse it. Uh, there you should check, is it uh, for example, is this arrow in the right position? Move to uh, pointing to up and to down. Um, is all data present here? Is is the transition smooth? Uh, and stuff like that. So one of the elements that you can have on your page is this collapsible panels or some uh, yeah collapsible panels. You can call them like that. I mean there are multiple terms for that, but it's enough for you to know for now that we can call them collapsible panels. Uh, what else did I wanted to show you here is, let's try to search here. I'm going to, okay, there's not enough. I'm going to uncheck this. So because I'm not searching by any term, this should show me all the results they have currently. And now we have 66 six of the results in this table. 
Uh, one of the things that I mentioned in the previous video, and uh, I want to show it here, uh, but the thing is, it is not implemented. Uh, table loading, what I mentioned, is the next thing. So when you have uh, more rows that can fit into one like single page without scrolling, uh, that should be uh, developed like this. For example, when I do the scroll, uh, this first row, so I can see the name of the columns, should fit, like stay here, while all the rows are just scrolling. So this should be always like static here, and now I'm scrolling and I'm just viewing the, the rows, but this is not implemented here, so I cannot really show you how that look like, looks like. But what I can show you here is the pagination. So what is the pagination? So we have multiple pages, uh, multiple results that fit into into this table. So they said, okay, I'm going to have a 50 rows per one page of this table. So that is a pagination. And when it comes to pagination, I should check that, first of all, is it really 50 results in here, which we're not going to do right now. And uh, is the navigating to the next page available? Okay, you can see here that it is marked to the second page, that these arrows, is this arrow leading to the first, and is this arrow leading to the very last page, and are these uh, level, are, are these um, arrows leading to the previous, and to the next. This is one of the things that also should be checked if you have this some kind of a tooltips when hovering over some icon or some button that tells you, well, this is doing this thing. That's also really helpful for the users. I mean, in this case, it's not because, you know, it's, you can see these kind of elements in many, many web pages, so you should know what this represents. But in some other cases, when it's not that, easy to figure out what some kind of a button does, it's useful to have these, some kind of a tool tips for those elements. Uh, okay, enough about these. Now I'm gonna go on some other page and show you one more thing. Um, okay, there is uh, this form for, for creating a job title, uh, and we have some uh, required fields. I already told you that you should check them if they're required. Is there some kind of a message? Yes, there is a required thing. We're going to uh, try to fill in these fields, like, I don't know, something. It doesn't really matter. Job description. When you see these kind of fields that are stretchable, resizable, you should try to resize them and see what's going on with them. For example, I did this and I tried to type something and then I did this and whoa, I got a bug, it moved to the other side. It just, the UI is broken. So this doesn't work really well. And when you uh, move it to the smaller size, when you type in, you should see a scr scroller, which you can see here. So that's something you should check for these types of fields that are, that are uh, resizable. Now for the choose file, uh, you should uh, see this restriction and you should find a file on your computer that is up to one megabyte and that is larger than one megabyte and to see if there's some validation message when you try to upload uh, some image or file uh, that is larger than this. And we're just going to try to save it here. And what should uh, be checked? We should check if there is some kind of a sequence here, some order. Where did that go, you see under S, so it's on his good place, and we have what we written as a job title, is that the thing that we written, and this description, is that the thing that we written. Now try to delete it, select it, 
delete, successfully deleted, okay, and to check that it's not present here anymore. One of the things that I want to show you more uh, is those um, toast messages that disappear. Uh, when you come to the time that you have to validate, you can see that uh, they're going away really quickly and you don't even have the time maybe to see what is the text inside and you have to validate it. You have to validate the color, the size of the text, the size of the of that uh, message and stuff like that. How can you catch it? I'm going to show you now that. We're going to do again the inspect thing. Then you're going to go into the console and you're going to write debugger. Then you're going to do the action. Uh, we want to get any kind of uh, toast message here, so we're going to just add something. It doesn't matter what. And when I do this action, I will click here, enter, so the bugger can pause this action and it actually it will freeze my UI. Everything that is on the UI in that moment, it will be frozen. Now let's do this. Save and do this. Okay, it's frozen now and we can see that message. Now we're going to go back to elements and we're going to try to inspect it to try to find it. Okay, it's here. And this way it's stick here and you can check the no text inside uh, and whatever you need from the properties, what is inside here, uh, I don't know, the color and stuff like that. But I'm not going to show you those details, but you can see here just the way how you can catch that message before she goes away. Well, guys, uh, that's pretty much it. I hope uh, these additional examples were uh, useful to you and see you very soon in the next video. Goodbye.